This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Dr Liz Carpenter talks about her research on membrane proteins and drug development. Hello Liz. Hello. What are membrane proteins? Membrane proteins are large biological molecules embedded in the, the surfaces of cells. So all the cells, the organelles within cells, the nucleus of cells, they're covered by a hydrophobic lipid bilayer that stops things going in and out of the cells. These proteins sit in the lipid bilayer and transport things in, move waste products out, and send signals in and out of cells. So this is the way that the cells communicate with um, their outside world, their environment. So why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Well, there's two reasons, really. Firstly, um, many diseases are caused by mutations in these, um, these proteins. So, for example, neurological diseases, depression, schizophrenia are the result of, of mutations in iron channels. Um, cystic fibrosis is a mutation in an ABC transporter protein. When the protein goes wrong, they cause diseases. Secondly, about 50% of all known small molecule drugs actually bind to membrane proteins on the surfaces of cells. So if we want to design better drugs, if we want to aim to cure diseases, we need to understand the, the actual molecular structure uh, that drugs bind to, and then we can develop better and improved drugs. And what's the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or ten years? For a long time it's been possible to solve structures of soluble proteins, ones that um, sit in solution. For membrane proteins, five or ten years ago this was virtually impossible, there were about ten structures. Over the last five years it's become possible to um, develop uh, structures, to solve structures of membrane proteins from bacteria and a few human ones. And over the last year there's been very, very exciting developments in the field uh, where a large number of structures are starting to come out. So, so we've gone from two or three structures a year to being able to produce um, 11 or 12 structures every year. Um, and these are structures of, of G protein coupled receptors, my own research looking at enzymes and ABC transporters. Um, so we're really getting to a point now where we can look at structures that come from humans, which means that we can actually work to cure diseases by looking at using those structures to cure diseases. And how do you determine the structure and function of membrane proteins? First of all, we have to extract the protein, usually by... So these proteins sit in a very hydrophobic surface, so, so we have to extract them using detergent, effectively washing up liquid. Um, we pull them out of the, uh, the membrane, and then we have to persuade them to line up in rows to form crystals. If you hit a single molecule with x-rays, uh, you don't get a diffraction pattern, it destroys the molecule. So we use the crystal to work as an amplifier, all these molecules lined up together, we hit the crystal with x-rays and you get a diffraction pattern and we work backwards from the diffraction pattern um, to actually get the structure of the protein. Can you give us an example from your own current research? We've recently solved the structure of a very interesting protein called ZMPC-T24. It sits in the membrane of the nucleus of cells and its, its role is to process the nuclear lamins, so these proteins that sit on the inside of the nucleus of cells um, and are involved in division of cells and in binding to DNA in the cells. Um, and our protein is necessary to process this uh, protein so that it's no longer attached to the membrane. Um, when this goes wrong and it remains attached to the membrane, um, this leads to a number of diseases called laminopathies, including restrictive dermopathy, which is a very unpleasant condition, causes uh, neonatal death, and progeria, which is premature aging. So those children, um, by the age of two, they have some of the symptoms you'd expect in an 80-year-old, and they usually die by the age of about uh, early teens as a result of um, heart disease. This is actually relevant also possibly for, for, for um, aging, normal aging within um, normal human beings. Mutations in ZMP or a lower level of production of this protein uh, may lead to some of the adverse effects of aging in normal, normal adults. And how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? So the Nuffield Department of Clinical Medicine provides a unique environment um, for taking what is academic research, looking at structures and molecules and how small molecules bind to those structures, um, and translating that all the way into the clinic. So within the Structural Genomics Consortium, we have a, a, a support structure that helps us to design not just molecules that bind and inhibit, but also molecules that would be suitable candidates to be taken forward as, as drug targets. And within the NDM, we have access to, to clinicians, to patient material, which allows us to actually design efficiently um, small molecules so that rather than purely academic research, we can take this forward into the clinic. Thank you, Liz.